Welcome back to Lumifa Classic. And this video started out quite differently. Two videos ago, I showed you guys a routine thing I do during the winter where I start up the cars I don't drive just because I don't want to bring them out on the salt and the grit and just warm them up through so fresh fuel goes through the fuel system and everything. However, the 1977 XJ12 did not want to start. <laughs> So as you see, it was completely, completely dead. It was just as if it wasn't getting spark. However, I put on a spark tester and that shone a light. But it was too rainy and loud down there to do anything else. I thought maybe it was a fuel pump issue or something that, cause I could hear the relays click, but I couldn't really hear the pump cause the rain was so loud. But it ended up being something different. It ended up being a new part being faulty once again. So let's roll the tape on that and then we'll come back here and we'll talk about these new faulty parts. I managed to find a couple minutes when it's not raining. So the battery's been on charge and we're down here and it hasn't been raining from the side as much. So it's actually a lot drier in here. We don't have any condensation on the engine. This time the dehumidifier is working overtime. It's actually keeping it pretty dry in here. So that's good. I've also unplugged the cold start injectors in case one of them is sticking um, and flooding it. We don't really know what happened last time. Battery's on charge. Let's give it another try because this time I can actually hear if the fuel pump is doing anything. Before it was raining so hard, I only heard the relay click, but I didn't actually hear the pump. And um, yeah, so it was really hard to troubleshoot. But let's get into the car here if we can hear the pump because on this car, when the whole fuel system is filled, and there is just sending it back to the tank, you can hear when the fuel pressure regulators open up. So hopefully that's working and hopefully it fires up this time. I've cycled the key several times and I can hear fuel returning to the tank and I've gone out there and I don't smell any fuel leaks or anything. So cycle a little bit more and let's see what happens. It really doesn't sound like the injectors are firing. If I go like this and I push the pedal, I should hear a couple injectors. Yeah. I don't think I hear the injectors. I cranked it through the window and I can hear the injectors. So they're ticking away. Smell a little bit of fuel. Uh, I also just put on a spare one of these. That is sort of a ballast resistor for the ignition. That seems fine. I'm going to troubleshoot a little bit more. This is really, really strange. Like I said, this thing has never, ever been troublesome. The distributor cap is nice. I mean, it's not dripping wet. There's a tiny, tiny bit right there, but really that would not hinder this thing from starting. Rotors in there looks yeah, pretty fine as well. They're really strange, but I just want to check that. So I'm going to put it back together, I'll lay a loose spark plug in there, check for spark. And uh, I don't know. We'll have to go from there. That's all back together. Plug wires are on there. And it just laid a loose spark plug here from an HE. And I'm going to see if ignition is on right now. Just gonna take and jump the starter here and see if we see a spark on there. That was a really nice blue spark. Really, really strange. I think it's definitely spark related, even though it looks like I have it, because I removed one of the plugs and these are just one season old. And look at this. It's quite a weak little spark there. So something is definitely going on. We're slowly losing the light and it started raining like crazy again. But let's try one more thing. Ignition's on right now. I just put on another coil. That coil in there is a correct Lucas coil for this car. It's only been on there maybe two or three years. But that is the original Lucas coil that came off the car. It's from 1977. And uh, 
Well, let's give it a go. It wants to. A lot better than before. There we go. That is so strange. This is the second coil I've gone through on this car, a new coil. I had a running issue with it a couple years ago when I was out driving and it was getting weird and on the way home I measured that the coil had like was bad. I mean it was running but it wasn't running great and then it ran better with this coil and then I, that is so strange. But clear it out a little bit. This is very, very strange. I have the air filters off because I was trying with some starting fluid before and it wasn't going in as well. I have that one plugged in with the sensor, so it's running now. I'm going to let it warm up like the plan was before. And uh, this is odd. I think I'm going to start trying a different sort of coil. Because maybe these... I mean, they are supposed to be Lucas coils, but maybe they're made somewhere in China and they're not that great anymore. So it just needs to be a one ohm coil. So I'm going to probably try and find one from a different manufacturer and try it out for a while. I'll definitely keep that in the car because I know that one works, even though it's close to 50 years old. But yeah, it's running. So it ended up being a coil. The coil that was on there has maybe been on there for two years or so. It's the correct Lucas coil. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it's the correct one for the ignition system in there. It's also used on some other cars that use that ignition system, like some Aston Martins. It's also used on the XJ6 Series 3 and some other things. So in about... I've had the car for 10 years. Eight of those years I've driven it. I've gone through three coils. Is that wrong before I said two? It's three of them. And every single time when I put this old thing on, which should be the exact same coil, it works. This thing is fine. This is close to 50 years old and it works. So this thing is, um, it was been on my shelf as a bit of a decoration now, but it's going to permanently stay in the boot of that car as a spare part. I'm going to try a different manufacturer because it's not only this car. I've experienced it on my daily driver, which uses the XJ6 series free ignition system or used before. Gone through two coils on that one. So I've been through five of these coils spread out on different cars and uh, yeah, it's, it's just not a good thing. It's been other new Lucas things as well. They just haven't lasted. And the old ones seem to last really, really well. Let's talk about the title of the video, Prince of Darkness. It's something that we all joke about or, you know, a jar of uh, Lucas smoke. You don't let the smoke out, things like that. But honestly... I find the electric system on British cars to be no better or no worse than many other cars of the same era. I mean, I daily drive these things and it works fine. Um, I haven't had any major issues just because of bad wiring and things like that. It's been usually age related or that someone else has been in there and just have modified things. Normally, everything has just worked as it should. The one thing I've noticed is alternators. They just don't seem to last as long as alternators made by uh, Bosch and, um, you know, other things. But that's really the only thing I have noticed. That, um, uh, I mean, they haven't lasted that long or the output is not that good. But in that case as well, original alternators are better than the new reproduction ones. So, really, really strange. In this case, I'm going to try a different manufacturer. I think I want to start looking at MSC just because I um, never owned any of a product. But I mean, if people put them in drag racing and things like that, and I mean, their products must be good. At least that's what I hope. So I'm going to look through and see if they make a coil that has the correct uh, primary resistance I need, which is about 0 0.9 to 1 ohm. If they have that and it's a high output coil, I'm going to pick one up and try it out, and then if it happens, I'll let you guys know. But please let me know, have you experienced similar things that I've experienced with 
this new part's not being as good as old parts. It doesn't just have to be Lucas. It could be maybe you work on German cars and new Bosch parts for classics are not as good as old ones. I don't know. Maybe they're all just made in the uh, same factory somewhere and uh, no attention to details made. Just slap on the stickers, make them look like the old stuff, and uh, people will be happy about them when they put the car for the Concorde, but it's not going to work. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Anyways, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and share it with friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Till next time, I'm Adam. This was Luma for Classic. I'll see you soon.